Hello and welcome back to my channel. I am here with a double whammy book review of If I Stay and the sequel Where She Went. I just finished reading these. I haven't read them since I was like in grade 10, I'd like to say. So it's been a while. Um, yeah, so let's, let's talk about them. So the series starts off with If I Stay, which is about a girl named Mia who plays the cello. Her family's all like punk rockish. Um, and they all get in a car accident. And she has to decide if she's gonna stay alive or, spoiler alert, join her whole family who died. Um, so I don't have too much to say about this book. It was pretty average. A lot of what I remember like it wasn't like oh wow um it was when I was younger and read it for the first time I sobbed this time I only cried a couple of times mostly once um I like the story I like that it's told kind of in present and flashbacks and the flashbacks don't happen in chronicle chronological order but I could still follow them I could still figure out what was going on. Um, so I was looking at some reviews on Goodreads, like negative reviews, because sometimes those give the most like, oh yeah, that's something to think about instead of people like fawning over it. And someone asked, well they didn't ask, but they said like if you need to add flashbacks for your book to make sense, then you don't have a good book. But I disagree, because the flashbacks really kind of added to the story. Um, you learn about her family, you care about them more, even though in the very beginning you know they're dead. It makes it more tragic. I think flashbacks in this book do really help it with the emotional impact. Um, but yeah, that's kind of all from the reviews that I got and thought, oh, I could talk about that. But it didn't really last long now, did it? Um... <laughs> I don't know how to review a book that isn't like a hated book so I don't know like it was okay um one of my favorite parts was when they play each other like instruments that happened actually pretty early on I think yeah so they're like oh we haven't banged yet and then Adam the main love interest is like play me play me like a cello and then Mia's mental talk is like I started to protest that this made no sense but then I realized it made perfect sense does it I'm not a music geek so I don't know <laughs> does that make sense does anyone play the cello if a guy was like play me like one of your cellos whatever your name is would you be like oh I'm turned on or would you be like what does that mean? Because I am still confused and I've read the scene. So she like just touches him like she would a cello, like jabs her fingers into his chest. I don't know how you play a cello. Brings her cello bow across his hips and I guess it's sex. I don't know. Then he plays her like a guitar and she feels it in places that he's not touching her and like if you've seen my like magic series there is a kiss scene i don't remember what video it's in off the top of my head so i guess you just have to watch the whole thing um please do i put a lot of me and my friend put a lot of hard work into that anyways it just reminds me of one of the scenes where they kiss which isn't a good thing, because, like, magic's a parody, and this is a real book that's serious. But it's because of this line. I had never known that I could make, wait, yeah, I could make someone feel this way. Like, it just reminds me of the, like, magic thing. Um, she talks about how the tuning fork intensifies. I guess that's her horniness. I don't know. This was just like the one scene that I was like, I need to talk about it. And it goes on for way too long. Like it starts on like the end of page 59 
and goes to kind of the end of page 62. And then it was just really weird. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, besides that, I don't have too much to say. I liked the scene where... Also, I haven't explained this. So Mia is in a coma, but her s spirit, I guess, is like wandering around the hospital seeing all of her family and friends. Um, so there is a part where her grandparents get to visit her in her coma and her grandpa is like, it's okay if you need to let go. We understand because everyone else is like, girl, you gotta stay. We can't take this trauma anymore. So I always liked that scene, even in the movie, I remember enjoying it. Um, there's also the scene, Adam, the main love interest, is in a band called Shooting Star. In the movie, I think it's Willamette Stone, but I don't remember, so don't quote me on anything, really. Just don't quote me. Ever. <laughs> um, so... Adam's in this band, and they're supposed to open for this singer named Brooke. Brookie? Brooke? Cookie? I don't know what's going on. I didn't sleep well last night. Um, and then he brings her to the hospital because he's not allowed in the ICU where Mia is because he's not family. He's just a boyfriend. And he <laughs> brings Brooke to the hospital to create a diversion because his only other idea is let's pull a fire alarm which like is not smart to do in a hospital when there's no fire because how are you this has always been my question how are you gonna get all those people out of the hospital if there's a fire i have a lot of nurse friends well nurses in training so i guess like they might know but like how do you know who to wheel out first will it be like in like magic where somebody in a wheelchair just like an old frail person gets like tossed down the stairs like do they just have a oh no there's a fire elevator where they just like shove everyone who can't move by themselves into it like how do they do that anyways sorry back to the diversion so she like just starts singing in the hallway and it's not working <laughs> the nurses there are some nurses who are like oh brooks here like the pop star or the indie band star i don't know what she is i forget and then there's this one mean nurse because of course there is who's like no sit down i don't care about the pop star so you shouldn't either so then um adam mia's friend kim who went to get him and all these other like people who are just fans or part of bands just like rush into the icu and then Adam gets taken away right before he sees Mia. That was funny. I mean, serious and dramatic, not funny. Um. <sighs> and then, like, this one character who works at a different hospital that knows Mia and her family shows up, which is when Mia realizes her younger brother is dead. And then she kind of takes charge and lets Adam see Mia in the hospital. And then he, this is the important part, I'm just kind of breezing through this book because I didn't really have much to say. Um, so he's like, you need to stay. I don't care if you break up with me. I don't care if, like, you never talk to me again. I just need to know you're somewhere in the world and that you're alive. You've lost a lot today. I get that, but stay for me. And music, and then he like plays a Yo Yo Ma song. Also, I think is Yo Yo Ma. I've never looked this up. A real thing, or is that just made up for the book? Like I struggle to tell sometimes, and it's like Google's right there, but I just never Google it. But so Adam plays her a Yo Yo Ma song, and then she squeezes his hand, and then he says Mia, and the book is over. Yo Yo Ma. Yo-Yo Ma's real! Oh, that's cool. Okay, then I can actually look him up and listen to stuff. Because I am curious about the cello. I don't listen to, like, classical music a lot. Or, um, punk rock music a lot, I guess I would say. So, I'm very alienated from everyone in this book. 
But um, yeah, so that's kind of this one in a nutshell. A very short nutshell. Would I suggest it? Maybe. If you want to cry, because it is sad. Like, you do kind of, like, grow to love her parents. It's sad, like, seeing her be like, oh my god, my whole family is dead. Like, yeah, that's traumatic. Um, keep that word in mind. Trauma? Traumatic? Remember that. Remember that. <laughs> but yeah, so, If I Stay, I loved it as a teen. Not as much anymore, but I still liked it a lot more than some of the other books I reread from my teen years, which if you follow me on Goodreads, down below will be my link if I can ever figure out how to do that, because I keep messing up my Goodread links somehow. Um, <laughs> it will be down below, and you can follow me and see all the books I'm reading. Also, if you review or, like, just rate books on Goodreads, follow me because I want to follow you because I like reading other people's reviews. And it's just hard when, you know, not everyone I follow updates their Goodreads and it makes me sad. Anyways, yeah, so that's If I Stay. So, Where She Went takes place three years after If I Stay. It follows Adam, which... I don't know, I like that. I like that the first book's Mia and her problems, this one's Adam and his man pain. Um, because what else is it? The girl on the cover, I don't, here's the thing, okay? I don't like it when books have actual people on the covers, unless they're movie covers, and these aren't the movie covers. And I don't know if I like it, this one her lips look really dry, but I guess she's like, half dead so and the strand of hair across her face looks really photoshopped this one I don't know I don't know is it the same girl does it say winter portrait photo front cover hmm they're not designed by the same person so maybe they're not the same girl but anyways so I don't know how I feel about those but I do really like the movie covers like, well, the movie cover for this book. So I kind of wish that I had that one and I guess the updated second cover where they tried to make it fit the movie edition with different cover people. Anyways, enough about covers. I've been talking about it for way too long. Where She Went takes place three years after If I Say. I don't remember if I said that because my brain is not here. Um... And Adam and his band Shooting Star are now, like, really famous. And he hasn't seen Mia since she left. Oh, by the way, Mia applied to Juilliard, the big pretentious music school, and she got in. We don't find that out in the first book. We find that out here. We find it out in the movie. Um, so I was kind of shocked that it wasn't in there. But I guess, you know, you gotta be hopeful. But it's in this one that she got into Juilliard. She went to Juilliard told Adam, like, I love you, and then just stopped talking, like, just never came back. She never- I love when books do that, when it's like, someone leaves and then they never come back. Wow, emotional pain. We gotta love that. Um, so Adam, three years later, is still hung up on Mia, which I guess, fair enough, I don't know, I've never broken up with, been broken up with by someone who goes to their music school of their dreams after their whole family dies in a car accident and leaves me with no explanation. So maybe three years is still a lot, like enough time to be all bitter and sad about it, but come on, dude, like move on a little bit, you know? He has a girlfriend, Brian, Bryn, B-R-Y-N. Bryn, I don't know, she was really unnecessary to the whole story. She's only really shown in flashbacks, and then he just, at the end, is like, he just calls her and he's like, hey, I'm in New York with Mia, so bye. And then that's it. So she was useless, just kind of there to add to the page count. Um, when she first gets introduced, it's with Brooke, who was in the first book, and 
Brooke, no one updated her to be like, hey, Brooke, you remember that girl you sang for to, like, try and get Adam into her coma room? Yeah, she's not dead, so Brooke thought she was dead. Told Brian she, Bryn she was dead, and then Bryn was like, Adam, I'm so sorry that, like, your girlfriend died. Here are my, here's my chest. Probably, I don't know, I feel like, because there was a lot of talk about how Adam was like, oh yeah, like, Bryn keeps tricking the tabloids that she's pregnant because I think she wants to be. So I just, just like, it just felt kind of slut shamey in a weird way, but, like, she was just such an unnecessary character. I don't know. But when Adam breaks up with her, she's quiet for a minute and he's like, hey, are you still there? And she's like, yeah, I'm just thinking if I wish that Mia had still, like, if I'm still wishing she died in that accident... And I'm deciding, no, I wish you had. And then she hangs up on him and I'm like, okay, like, I don't under I don't know if we're supposed to hate her or not. I really can't tell if we're supposed to hate Bryn or not because it's not clear. It's just, it, it did not come across right because I'm very, like, I just don't care about her enough to be like, oh yeah, the author wanted me to hate her. Or, oh yeah, I'm supposed to feel bad for her because Adam's like, hung up on this girl that left him three years ago. Anyways, <sighs> so another problem Adam has is he doesn't like the music anymore. That's part of what made Mia and Adam get together, is she's very passionate about her cello, he's passionate about his guitar. They're, they're two opposites, they're like magnets, they shouldn't connect, but they do. Um, what am I trying to say? So, he's just, he's annoyed with the music. It's not his passion anymore. Being in the band and being famous has made him lose his love of it, which, like, is one of my favorite tropes. Celebrities who hate being famous and who feel all sad. I love, like, the lines where, especially with singers, where they're, like, on stage looking out at the thousands of cr people and they're like... <sighs> I'm in a room full of millions and I feel alone. That is my favorite trope with celebrities. Um, I even was writing a book just based off that idea once. It tanked. Maybe it will come back one day, but like it tanked. But I had that trope just because I love it so much. So that's Adam. Um, and he's hung up on Mia, like I've said, which I'm going to keep saying because he keeps saying it. Like, bro, we get it. Um... So he's in New York, about to leave for London in a day. He doesn't travel with the band anymore. He travels on different days, stays in different hotels, because they've kind of, there's been a fallout. The fallout is one of the stupidest things ever. So Adam is more popular than the rest, because he's kind of been like the designated front man. And he has this band, na band mate named Mike, who one day, like, yelled at him because an interviewer was only focusing on Adam and Mike was like, why do you think that you're like, we're here too, Adam, completely ignoring the interviewer. Adam, we're here too. Why do you think you're the front man? Like, dude, ask the interviewer first off. And second, it's not Adam's fault that he's sexy and angsty. Like, God, go get a facelift and some angst. Like, come on. That's why they want him. It just felt very weird <laughs> that this band didn't understand the concept of fans and, like, the media latching onto someone as, like, the main band member. Like, to bring up my first love, One Direction. <laughs> I don't know why I said it like that. <laughs> to bring up One Direction, Harry Styles was the frontman of that band. Were there... Four other guys? Yes. Did people love them as much as Harry Styles? No. It was Harry Styles. He was like the designated frontman from Five Seconds of Summer. I have not said that word in so long. It was Luke. Because people just gravitated towards him more than the others. Bands have a frontman. It's a thing. There's a K-pop group, I don't know which one, but I feel like I only see one name all the time. I can't remember what it is now because I'm not into K-pop. 
if you are, you do you, maybe you know. But there's, like, one person who everyone, like, obsess over. But there's, like, seven people in a K-pop group. And I see one name most of, like, 90% of the time. So it's just a thing. Bands have the one front man, and that just happened to be Adam, because I think he's the main singer and main guitar player, and he made, like, he wrote all the songs on the album that shot them to stardom, so yeah, people are gonna care about him a little bit more than you, Mike. Maybe you should get some angst. Go find a girl, kill her whole family, have her break up with you, and then you're good. Adam didn't kill her family, but you know, that's like what Mike gotta do. Gotta, has to do. Anyways, so that annoyed me because the band basically, they're like so annoyed with Adam because he's more popular than them and it's like, it's just because you're not sexy. Like, Liz, come on. You're a lesbian. Do you really think all of these pock runk dudes are gonna thirst over you? No. Well, okay. I can see why you'd say yes. But also, no. They want, like, the girls, the straight girl fans you have are into Adam, so like don't be bitter. You have a girlfriend slash wife slash fiance, I don't remember. Be happy with her. Be happy. There's probably a little gaggle of lesbians off in the corner who are there for you. Just feed off them. You don't need the straights. Anyways, what am I saying? I don't know what's happening. This book took me too long to read. I wanted to finish it in a day. It took me like two, which isn't that bad, but uh, it just dragged. So that's why it's easier to review than the other one, because I have more complaints. Um, let's see. Oh, Adam also, when Mia ghosted him after going to Juilliard, kind of dropped off the face of the earth for a while, and he didn't tell his bandmates that he was going to do that. He didn't really keep in contact with them, and then one day he just kind of broke, wrote a bunch of angry so songs, and then went back to them. And the band was like, bro, like, you did leave, but also, these are straight bangers. So they let him back in, which Mike was also bitter about. And it's like, Mike, angst. Just be angsty. Anyways, Adam runs into Mia in New York. She's playing a concert, like a solo concert with her cello. And he's outside the not stadium, the concert hall where she's playing and he buys a ticket and listens and then, you know, there's a lot of workers there who are like, oh my god, like, Adam Wilde is here. So Mia invites him backstage and then invites him to dinner and then on a, like, little trip around New York City because it's, like, her farewell tour because she's going to Tokyo to play a couple concerts, then to Korea. And he's like, oh, well, I'm going to London tomorrow, so I guess I'll come chill too. Mia. And then he just, he never asks straight up any questions. Like, when she first kind of ghosted him, he visited her grandparents a lot and just never asked, hey, do you know what happened with me and Mia? I think Mia's friend Kim visits him, like, once. And then just to check up on him and he... He doesn't really ask her what's up with Mia. He doesn't really push it, because she he does. He's like, oh, so you guys are in contact? And she's like, well, I don't really want to discuss Mia with you and you with Mia. And then he just gets mad like a true BBLI, and he's like, then get the fuck out of my house. Why do I care about you? Like, you're nothing. You're a nobody without Mia. I don't need to care about you. Which is another thing from the first book. Adam and Kim never really got along, but they were friendly because of Mia, like, the only connection they really had. So that was something she talked about a lot. Um, Kim being mentioned in this book was kind of useless. That scene, it just didn't, it didn't make me like Adam. In the first book, I was like, yeah, Adam's, like, a nice boyfriend. Like, he seems nice. In this one, I was like, no wonder she ghosted you. You're weird. You're weird. You're a weirdo. Like, you know that Riverdale clip <laughs> with the hat? You're a weirdo, Adam. You, you're you just sexy and have angst. That's all you got going for you. Um, but yeah, 
so I forget where I was going with that point, but it's fine. Um, Kim does come back up when Mia and Adam are together. Oh, right, it's because he never asks questions. But I'll, I'll finish my one thought. So Kim does come back up. She wants to be a photographer and she's 20 years old, keep that in mind. Adam's like 21, the girls are 20. She's already like famous and in like selling her photos to the Times Magazine or National Geographic and I don't know how likely that is because I'm not an expert but it just like all three of them just got so famous in their passions that it's like come on just give me one failure make me feel better about myself you know but yeah so that was a bit I don't know that just felt weird but you go go you you know, reach for the stars, find your passion, do it at 20, whatever. Anyway, so Adam doesn't really ask her during their, like, hunt around New York. Like, hey, why did you just leave me? And when he finally does, she's like, finally, you ask it. Like, oh my god, why didn't you just tell him? Like, why couldn't we have just had this conversation? I get it was a bit awkward, but that should have been the first thing out of your mouth. Anyways, so... She tells him it's because you made me stay and I was so angry and I needed someone to be angry at and you were the person I loved so I had to take it out on you and then Adam's like ah man pain I can't remember what he yells but he like yells off a bridge into the New York City and then Mia leaves because what he was yelling basically implied I think he said I can't take this and so she leaves and then he's like, oh, she's finally gone. And then she comes back and he's like, I just let go of her after three years. I just let go of her and she's back. And then they go back to where she lives in New York and just like nap because they've been out all night. And then um, he makes her coffee and then they decide to get back together basically is what happens. Um, there was this one scene where Adam was like, I want to have my lips on her neck, taste her sweat, and blah blah blah. And I was like, sir, that's not playing you like a cello. I thought that's all you were into. Cause that was such a weird scene! <laughs> is this a you just is this a musician thing? I need to know. But anyways, so yeah, that's kind of it. There was like these books, it's weird. Cause they're only like 260 pages so not too long there's a lot of bonus content like in this one like that much of the book is bonus content and in this one this much of the book is bonus content that's so much like anyways so yeah, I don't really know how to review books that I'm indifferent about, <coughs> but these ones I was- I, I liked the first book better because there was more emotion to it. Adam didn't- like the main character didn't piss me off all the time because Adam was just kind of like wallowing and a lot of it felt like he forgot Mia had trauma and he was like, oh I don't understand these actions and it's like, well maybe because her whole family died. And that's traumatic, Adam. <laughs> so he just, it just kept feeling like he forgot she had trauma. But the problem is he also had trauma because he was close to her family. So like, you know, that hurt him too, but everyone was too busy focusing on making sure Mia's okay. But like, so no one really focused on themselves or each other. It was just her like making sure she's okay because she's the one that lost everything. But I don't know, it just, I feel like he should have at least told himself, like, look, bro, Mia's whole family's dead. She, she left and she's probably dealing with that shit because I think she refused therapy when she was living in Oregon, which is where she's originally from. So, like, she was re refusing therapy, at least for a bit. So, you know, I would have just chalked everything up with, like, okay, she's traumatized it sucks that she left me out of the blue and just stopped talking to me, but, you know, 
it's what I promised her. I promised I'd leave if she needed me to, and I guess she needed me to. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm just making, maybe I'm making no sense. I have no idea because I just wanted to film these and get it done so I can have some more videos to upload because we're trying to do that more. Anyways, this is another entry into my books from my childhood or books I grew up with. I can't remember what I named it playlist. Um, I'm going to try and put more in there because I like rereading books and judging them <laughs> now that I use this more. But yeah, um, I don't know. So I would suggest reading this one and then I would suggest this one if you want like I'm a pop star, which means I have to be miserable. So I, I don't know if I would read this one again after this, honestly, but since I'm making people annotate them, that's a warning for my friends. Since I want people to annotate these, I don't think I'm going to get rid of them soon, but maybe one day. I don't know. I don't know. Anyways, let's wrap this up. Um, I'm Claire. This is my double, my double whammy review. I hope it was okay. I don't, I just, like, most of my reviews have been rants, so I don't really know how to talk about books that aren't, like, full-on Hardin Scott's a dick, you know? Because I, I couldn't compare Adam to Hardin Scott, that's the thing. He was at least better than Hardin, um, but he, he was just, he was annoying. Like, not even annoying, it's just, I didn't care, he was bland. Where's the flavor? Where's, where's the... Thing that makes me care. I had that in the first book because even though her like Mia's whole family died right away you still learnt about them afterwards which made the fact that they were dead hit harder. Oh there's a thing in a lot of books where someone dies right away and then we're supposed to care about them they don't really do it right. They show very few um scenes with like flashbacks or memories with that character and they kind of show they don't do the show they tell us you should care about this person and they're dead so you should be sad and i think if i stay did a good job at least the first book did a good job of being like hey here's these characters i'm going to show them to you so you can care about them yourself and i liked that um but yeah that's kind of that's my review. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, it's almost Christmas, which means I might be reviewing the third after book, but I don't know because that book's harder. To, that book is harder to review than these ones were because so much happens that I just can't keep my mind straight with what's going on. So I don't know if that's actually going to come out on Christmas. If not, I will do something special that's after related for all those people that I promised would get the third <laughs> book review. Um, but yes, yeah, so we'll see what happens. Um, I hope you guys have a nice day. Enjoy. I don't know what it's like outside or like, I don't know. It's sunny right now. So if it's sunny for you, enjoy the sun. If it's night, enjoy the night. If it's cold and snowing or raining or anything. Enjoy that. I don't know what the world is like. <sighs> I don't know how to end these. Okay, bye.